Hello, everybody. Um, this is my third time recording this because I believe I am literally a bot. Um, my first time recording it, I did not plug my microphone in at all. I was just talking. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. Then the second time, I did have it plugged in, but I forgot to change uh, my settings so that it um, would actually pick it up so this is my third time recording it so hopefully i don't accidentally skip over any information because i thought i've already said it um but long story short here we go so uh, a couple days ago i believe it was the 16th um nvidia released a new driver update and the driver update also included something new called nvidia image scaling or nis so if you've ever heard of AMD FSR, or if you've ever heard of um, NVIDIA DLSS, there we go, or even the new Microsoft one that they use in Forza Horizon 5, you'll know that an image upscaler lets you run a game at a lower resolution and upscale it to a higher resolution, giving you a lot more FPS. Like, if you've ever played a game with, like, FSR, it it's dramatic. I already have, um, I believe I have a video for Vanguard on this channel for during the beta when you had to go in the config files um, to turn it on. You get massive FPS increases, which for me is fantastic because I am on a GTX 1060 playing at 1440p, which is essentially like a sin. So um, how you use this, though, you can use it in any game, um, any game, period. But if you want it to run sort of, I guess, in air quotes, normally, the game has to support full screen. And it also has to um, support custom resolutions. So some games, if you put them in full screen, they don't let you change the resolution to a lower resolution. They just keep it at your native one. Like Halo Infinite, it's at borderless full screen, which also still works. Um, that game runs at borderless full screen, but you can't change the resolution other than your native one. And there's no way to run the game in regular full screen mode. But if you have experimental features turned on, you can just turn it on right here um, under image scaling, and you can set your option. I'm using 77% because that runs it just above 1080p, then it upscales back up to 1440p for me. So this <laughs> this card is much more capable as a 1080p card than as a, as a 1440p card because I believe um, 1440 p is about one-third more um, more pixels, so um, it, it it's very nice to get um, the FPS boost, as, as I'm going to show. But if you don't have GeForce experience, you can also go into NVIDIA control panel. You'll have to go to adjust image settings with preview, use advanced 3D image settings, and hit apply, because by default it's going to be set to let the 3D application decide. And then you'll go into manage 3D settings, Turn on your upscaling right here. It's set under image scaling. Turn it on. Uh, the sharpening is already set to 50%. I left it on that. I think it looks good. And I have the overlay indicator turned on. This is how you can tell if it's actually working in a game or not. Um, you're not going to be able to see it in this video, unfortunately, because NVIDIA Shadow Play does not actually support like seeing that. Um, but... It'll be up in the top left if, if for you. If it's not working, it will be blue and say NIS. If it is working, it'll be green and say NIS. It's pretty simple. And then if after you confirm that your game is working, you can just come in here and turn it off. Um, so the game I'm going to be testing it in to show you. Oh, also in that the control panel, later I'm going to be showing you a way if your game is not in full screen. Um or it does not support custom resolutions like Halo. So actually I'm going to leave that open. Um, I'm going to be showing you today in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War because out of the two games that I've tested with this, it's the only one that supports custom resolutions because I tried it in Halo Infinite and I've tried it in Cold War. So I will see you guys again when I am back into a game. All right, guys, welcome back. Um, I'm loaded into a game and I cleared out the zombies in this little area. Um, so we're currently running at native 1440p. If you look up in uh, the top left corner, you can see my FPS counter. Um, I'm staying in, in, in the low 40s. Uh, if I look like down or something, it'll it'll go up. But that's not how we're going to be playing. You're going to be looking around. Obviously, if like, you look 
maybe like in, like in a building, maybe at the wall or something. It'll be, it'll be nicer. But generally, you're gonna be having pretty poor FPS if you're using my setup. And also up in the top left, you you can't see this, but if you had your overlay on, then you'd be able to see that my NIS is blue, like I said. So what you'll do is go to settings, graphics, display resolution, and this is why the game has to support custom resolutions, because you're going to set it to whatever resolution you have it set to upscale from. So like whenever I picked 77%, this was the number that was underneath of that. So if I play at that number, now my NIS is green and my game is now upscaled. So I'm no longer running at native 1440p. My game is upscaling from whatever it was um, to 1440p. Now, some of the stuff looks like shit, but it, it looked like shit beforehand because this game just kind of looks like shit. Um, there was already some shimmering in the trees, but now there's definitely a little bit more on the farther away trees, but the closer ones actually have less shimmering than they did beforehand. And the stuff really far away looks a little bit blurry, but I mean, other than, other than, than that, this looks <laughs> genuinely like native 1440p. Um, if you're playing at 1080p, I'd probably recommend picking the 85% option. You you could still use the 77%, but the less pixels that you give the upscaler to work with, the worse the picture is going to look. So I'm running at slightly above 1080p, upscaling to 1440. So if you're running at 1080p and you give it like 720p, it the picture is going to look definitely blurrier. But you definitely could do that if those are the kind of performance gains that you need. Okay, so, but earlier I had mentioned, like, Halo Infinite. What if the game doesn't support those things? Like, Halo Infinite only supports borderless full screen or windowed mode. Since it's not in regular full screen, it doesn't support custom resolutions. So, how do you, how, how do you get it to work then? Well, you go into your the control panel. You go to change, sorry. I got text, my bad. You go to change resolution. And then here, scaling resolutions. You just pick one. You could pick not like the that one. Then if you hit apply, it'll put your entire computer at whatever resolution it it'll be for you. It'll be different uh, uh, unless you're also at 1440p. But for me, it'll be at 1969 by 1108. Then it'll upscale my entire computer back up to 1440p. Um, if you set that. Um, don't be alarmed if, like, the sizing gets messed up because it it will still be at the size as if you were running at that resolution. And if you know anything about Windows, lower the resolution, the bigger that it makes things because it, it assumes that your screen is probably smaller, which is not always the case. I wish it wouldn't do that. But, yeah, if the stuff like, like this bar down here and the icons on your desktop – get bigger don't be alarmed they it, it is still upscaling um to the correct resolution um so yeah that'll work for any game under that circumstance even if the game is running in regular windowed mode let's say you're playing undertale and you don't want uh, to make it full screen for whatever reason um it would upscale it not that you're having performance issues with undertale but um yeah that's essentially the end of, of the main video but at the end here i i want to give an apology to all of the people, uh, no, uh, to all of, of the people who watched my Halo Infinite video um, from a couple months ago during the flight, um, Halo Infinite on PC is in a really rough state when it comes to performance. The game only runs in DirectX 12, so 700 series and below. They they somewhat support DirectX 12, but not fully. So games that only run in DirectX 12 just don't work with a 700 series or below, even if you have a 780 Ti, which would be perfectly capable of playing the game. Um, doesn't matter. You just can't. And also, a lot of graphics cards that are supported, um, they just still aren't working. And it seems pretty random which ones are and aren't supported. Like by 1050 Ti, 4GB, is supported by default but my 1060 here is not it's the three gig model so you might think oh it's because it's because four gigs 
4 gigs of VRAM. Well, if you go and do what I showed in my, my other video, you can set it to actually work and launch, and, and it works just fine. But then also, like, Vega 3 graphics are supported, um, but not a GTX 1060. And that's kind of a slap in the face to the PC community that you that you won't support something like a GTX 1060, but Vega 3 graphics, which are AMD integrated graphics of the lowest variety of like modern AMD um, CPUs. But not a single Intel GPU is supported at all. Like the list is there, but they're all set to non-compatible. So I really just don't understand what they're really doing right now. It is a train wreck, and I there's no way to run the game in DirectX 11 or in Vulkan so that people who have older graphics cards could actually play the game. Um, and it's honestly just a slap in the face. Like, I know I get to play it, but a lot of people who have my exact same graphics card, or even higher graphics cards, it, the game just won't work. It uh, doesn't matter if they, if they run it at admin, turn off um, their... Uh, Antivirus, um, change their card to a different a preset, as I showed in that video. It, it just doesn't matter. The game just doesn't work. Um, so hopefully they get some of this stuff ironed out before launch. They're likely never going to give support to the 700 series and below, because they're likely never going to make the game DirectX 11 or Vulcan. So I'm 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 incredibly sorry to all of you guys. I I really do want to help you, but there's my hands are tied. There, there's nothing I can do. This is just kind of a train wreck for any kind of a PC gamer right now who just can't get an upgrade. I, I know, like a lot of you who have higher end like average cards, are thinking, "Well, to just just upgrade." This is this is not the time for that. Um, even old used graphics cards are going for hundreds of dollars. Like, if if someone has a 780 Ti or something or a 680 Ti then a lot of their games are still running perfectly fine. Like, they don't want to upgrade. And it's super expensive right now. Like, extremely expensive. Because if you're going to upgrade, you don't want to upgrade from a 7 series to a 10 series. Like, you're going to want to go to a 30 series, which is impossible. Like, it, it'll cost you hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So I am I am incredibly sorry to all of you. I, I hope maybe you can find a used Xbox One that's really cheap. Or maybe you just have an Xbox One sitting in your closet. Maybe you could just dust it off for Halo. I don't know. But re regardless, um, this is the real end of the video now, not just the end of the tutorial part. Um, I hope you all have a good day, and I hope that Halo Infinite isn't ruining your lives. Thank you.